may be when his mercy may be helpless the times when we close our hearts towards the lord that's why it is a clear warning given to each one of us dear friends especially people who do not take the presence of jesus seriously in their life people who are not bothered about leading a sinful life sometimes we have seen several people leading a sinful life for so many years as i told you during the adoration we are no one to judge them but we see it before our eyes or even when we look into our own hearts we come to know that we have been leading a sinful life for so many months and for so many years and we are coming into the presence of the lord without any prick of conscience it is said everywhere in the world the line for confession the queue for confession it becomes thin but the queue to receive holy communion it is it is increased that means we do not bother to confess our sins dear brothers and sisters let's thank the lord for today's gospel for allowing us to listen to his voice and we pray for the gift of the holy spirit that he may prepare our hearts to understand what jesus tells us whenever we come before the lord or pray before him immediately we pray for miracles mighty interventions of jesus in our life and certain images from the gospels would be passing through our minds maybe jesus is healing the paralytic we know the lord even healed a person who was paralyzed for 38 years or jesus delivering someone who is in evil possession or sometimes we may think of the lord walking over the waters whatever it be we always think of such miracles and we pray that such powerful miracles may happen in our life as well maybe we are going through a severe disease we want jesus to heal us in the same way he healed the paralytic or we are going through a great financial crisis we want jesus to bless us to overcome that crisis as the lord was walking over the waters we believe that with the lord we also will be able to overcome all the crises of our life it all is necessary we believe in miracles we believe in jesus and we must pray for such mighty interventions of the lord but dear friends as we are going through this lenten season as we look into today's gospel the gospel is setting before us a very pivotal a very important question which is the greatest miracle we can ever have in our life and this lenten season would remind us would tell us it is ultimately the change of our hearts it is ultimately the transformation of our life there is no greater miracle than that because that is truly the work of the holy spirit the lord tells us as we go through the gospel according to mark chapter 1 verse 15 dear friends the lord was beginning his public ministry and we know jesus as a person working many miracles but here the lord does not speak of the necessity of a healing the lord does not speak of any any deliverance from evil possession but the lord is directly coming to the matter 
he said the time is fulfilled the kingdom of god has come near repent and believe in the good news dear friends sometimes we may think did jesus not have any greater issues to bring forth why did jesus begin his public ministry speaking of the need of repentance the need of coming near to the kingdom of god friends because we realize the lord tells us that this is the greatest miracle we can ever have in our life a truly repentant heart whenever we come before the lord we ha- we have many prayer intentions we have as i said many special prayers but the base the foundation the source of all our blessings all the graces is a truly repentant heart during the adoration we had gone through the word from the book of genesis chapter 6 verse 5 5 and 6 the lord is looking at the world the lord is looking at the human kind and he feels sorry he feels sad because he has gone for such a creation it is important for each one of us to look into ourselves to ask ourselves when god looks at my life will he be sad when god when jesus looks at my words and deeds will he be sorrowful today the gospel in the gospel the lord is speaking the lord is giving us this parable the parable of the wicked tenants and there is a word we read it the gospel chapter 21 was 43 therefore i tell you the kingdom of god will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom friends as i said every time we come before the lord we would love to listen to prosperity gospel maybe many of us or all of us know what is prosperity gospel it means during an adoration or during a worship during listening to the word of god we get the assurance of our physical well being we get the assurance of our financial well being and we love to listen only to such prosperity gospel and every time we are hearing jesus is merciful or god is merciful or god is so loving and we remember only of a loving god but today the gospel tells us that the lord is also a judge and there are times when his mercy may be when his mercy may be helpless the times when we close our hearts towards the lord that's why it is a clear warning given to each one of us dear friends especially people who do not take the presence of jesus seriously in their life people who are not bothered about leading a sinful life sometimes we have seen several people leading a sinful life for so many years as i told you during the adoration we are no one to judge them but we see it before our eyes or even when we look into our own hearts we come to know that we have been leading a sinful life for so many months and for so many years and we are coming into the presence of the lord without any prick of conscience it is said everywhere in the world the line for confession the queue for confession it becomes thin but the queue to receive holy communion it is it is increased that means we do not bother to confess our sins we do not bother to have a change of heart even when this time is specially set apart 
to have a transformation in our life there are many people who do not even think of it that's why the lord is giving the lord is setting forth this clear warning before each one of us dear friends when we think of a merciful god when we think of a loving god we are sure that he is a loving god he is a merciful god but here the gospel reminds us of situations when even the mercy even the love of god does not work because we are so stubborn in our hearts that's why jesus tells the kingdom of god will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom people who produces the fruits of the kingdom and that to when in time in time we say together hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus so dear friends it is not enough that we produce fruits but the fruits should be produced in time when the landlord is coming to see the vineyard to meet the tenants surely he has to see the fruits otherwise there are more responsible there are more devoted people who will produce fruits and it is said the kingdom of god the blessings will be taken away from you and it will be given to them we say together hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus, thank you, jesus. praise you jesus. Praise jesus hallelujah hallelujah so dear friends we have to ask ourselves it is an important question we have to ask ourselves which group do i belong to whether to the group from whom the kingdom of god the presence of jesus the blessings of the lord will be taken away or to the group the kingdom the blessings will be given it will be given only if we are responsible in our spiritual life in our relationship with the lord so it is very important it is very essential to produce fruits in time that's why jesus began his public ministry giving us this reminder the kingdom of god is near repent and believe in the good news we see in the book of ezekiel chapter 36 was 26 a very familiar word for all of us the book of ezekiel chapter 36 was 26 a new heart i will give you and a new spirit i will put within you and i will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh dear friends during this lenten season especially as we take part in this lenten retreat what should be our prayer our prayer should be this oh lord give me a heart of flesh a changed a transformed heart that i may love you more and more dear friends we have been reflecting on the passion of the lord during the eucharistic hour and we read the word tells us he was wounded for our transgressions the book of isaiah 53:5 he was wounded for our transgressions and there is no only one reason there is only one reason for the passion and the death of our god that is our sins and still if we are continuing without change the lord will again be sorrowful the lord will be more sad so it is time for all of us to change what was the greatest sin of these tenants in the gospel the greatest sin was they did not think of the landlord they are thinking of the landlord only when he comes to them they think only of themselves that's what i said every time when we come before the lord we think only of ourselves we have a list of prayers we have a list of petitions and we want jesus to grant all of them and we want jesus to work powerful miracles in our life dear friends it is good to pray for miracles but sometimes we think only of ourselves we become too selfish too selfish to think of the landlord of jesus of god we say together hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah 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 
we read in the gospel in the book of joel chapter 2 verse 13 a very powerful word maybe you can note it down or you can you can keep it in your mind the lord tells us rent your hearts and not your clothing return to the lord your god for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing the lord never punishes if you study the bible the lord never punishes but the punishment is incurred it is invited through our sins our sinful life so the lord god is telling each one of us rent your hearts and not your clothing what does it mean it is not enough that we have some external practices during lent as we are going through this lenten season maybe we are fasting we are abstaining from certain dishes or we are taking some some external measures that others may appreciate us but the lord tells us it is not enough but rent your hearts rent your hearts we say together hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus so there are two groups the first group they are so selfish they do not even think of the landlord that's why the lord tells the kingdom of god will be taken away from you and be given to the people who are producing fruits this is the second group these people are producing fruits there are many people who really love god dear friends when you are praying before jesus be mindful of those people also think of them there are many people in every corner of the world who truly love jesus who are dedicating their life only to love jesus and we have to ask ourselves where do i stand where do i stand so this second group of people they are not selfish but they are thinking of the landlord they are aware of the time when the landlord would come into their life would come to meet them when the lord comes to meet us there should be some answer there should be fruits for him to see if we do not produce fruits what will happen as we go through the gospel according to matthew chapter 25 verses 44 and 45 we read the gospel according to matthew chapter 24 25 verses 44 and 45 then they also will answer we know this passage is from the last judgment lord when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you this is the question these people are asking then he will answer them what is the response from god truly i tell you just as you did did not do it to one of the least of these you did not do it to me and when we go through other passages we will see the lord will answer i do not know you let it never happen in our life dear friends we are having all these practices we take part in the adoration we take part in the holy mass and towards the end if we hear such a voice from god i do not know you it is it is so tragic let it not happen so we make use of let us make use of this lenten season to have a complete change of heart let us not become selfish some people do not think of god they think only of themselves their needs and some people they do not think of others people around them there may be several people who are truly in need during this lenten season we should be mindful of them it's not enough that we we simply pray before the lord but the prayer should be practiced the faith should be practiced we read in the letter of saint james chapter 2 verses from 14 onwards letter of saint james chapter 2 verses from 14 onwards what good is it my brothers and sisters if you say you have faith but do not do not have works can faith save you can faith alone save you never it should be put into practice we know it 
Sometimes we are too selfish to think of God. We are too selfish to think of the people around us. People who truly produce fruits, they will be mindful of others. These days I was reading a book by Matthew Kelly. And he has written, There should be no day in your life without asking at least a single person, How can I help you? When you go to bed every day, you have to recollect that day. You have to look into that day. There should be no day in your life without asking a person, at least a single person, how can I help you? Dear friends, if we do not help others, if you are not mindful of others, towards the end we will hear this voice, the Lord will tell us, when you did not do it to one of them, one of these little ones. You did not do it to me. I do not know you. We say together, Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we pray the divine office of the Sira Malabar Church, there is a beautiful prayer in morning, in the morning prayer. It goes in this way. When others look at my life, let them glorify you, O God. Dear friends, the prayer is in this way. When others are looking at my life, let me, let me lead a life in a way that others may glorify you. We seek self-glory most often. It should not happen. When people look at our life, when people look at our deeds and words, they should glorify Jesus. The Lord should be the center of our life, our deeds and words. It is not enough that we love others, but when we love others, people should be able to, or people should be inspired to glorify Jesus. Through our acts, through our words, Jesus must be more known. Jesus must be more understood. The Lord must be more followed. Otherwise, everything we do is in vain. We are not the center of our life. We are not the center of our words and deeds. It should not be so, but Jesus should, should be the center of everything we do. The word of God tells us, first letter of St. Peter, chapter 2, verse 12, conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that though they malign you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he comes to judge. We say together, Hallelujah. 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 The gospel according to Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. We know that word. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. When we are leading a responsible life, thinking of Lord and also of others, surely Jesus will be glorified. We all know the story of Maximilian Kolbe. I trust that like me, you are also not tired of hearing it again. In the Auschwitz concentration camp, when these Nazi prison guards, when they were randomly selecting 10 people to be killed in retaliation for a recent escape, what happened there, we know. There was one person who was selected to be killed. He was a father also a husband, a family man. He was crying aloud to be spared. Now comes Kolbe. He came forward. Then this prison guard, he was asking his identity. The words he used, we cannot repeat it. But he was asking about the identity of Kolbe. He replied, I am a Catholic priest. Dear friends, he did not say, I am his friend. Or he did not say, I am Maximilian Kolbe. But he said, I am a Catholic priest. When we are Catholic, it has an identity. Or when we believe in Jesus, it has an identity. It should reflect in our life. We know when Kolbe sacrificed his life, now people are glorifying the Lord through him should happen in our life as well. Dear friends, so let us keep in mind that our God is 
a merciful and a loving god but at the same time he is a judge he is setting forth this warning before each one of us that the kingdom of god will be taken away from you and be given to the people who produce fruits i told you we all are called we all are invited to produce fruits but in time in time it is very important when the landlord comes to see fruits it should be there so let us lead a life mindful of the landlord and also of the people around us and when others look at our life let them glorify jesus we are not the center we are not the focus of anything we do but let the lord be the focus of our deeds and words and let jesus and jesus alone be glorified in all our life god bless us with all our prayers let's offer the bread and wine